Some people think that I have some kind of fascination with blood, that I only choose a role if there's blood involved, but it's not true. I'm actually vegan. This is cranberry with a dash of B12. Mm, delicious. So welcome to my live DC Titans, my Instagram takeover of DC Titans. Um, after this live, I will be posting on their page a list of plot points going all the way to the finale, spoiling every single event one by one, uh, just because it seems like the villainous thing to do. Um, no, I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to you. So I've, I'm taking over for a specific purpose because I've got some questions. I've got some fan questions here that have been sent in ahead of time. And I, uh, you're welcome to ask questions live as well. There's a little question icon down the bottom that I can click. See, I'm tech savvy. And uh, I can find out uh, what's on your mind and maybe enlighten you. So, let's talk. Oh, I'm getting some. A audience of one. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at these, uh, these fan questions here that I got sent ahead of time. I'm going to start off with some of that. So, what is your favourite part about playing Sebastian? Asks Sahara San. So my favourite part about playing Sebastian was the journey. And because it was such a steep character arc, you know, where he started off uh, being this kind of lonely, uh, lowly, disgruntled, disenfranchised guy who, who worked the night shift as a taxidermist, and where he ended up was far, far different. And so there was an incredible uh, journey to travel on for me uh, there. And it was interesting because it didn't move as fast as I thought it might at first. It was a real slow burn. So what I tried to do was layer in these kind of cracks where you're seeing Sebastian's ego come through. You're getting glimpses of the supervillain that he maybe one day will become. And so that was the most fun part for me, Sahara, was uh, kind of designing that arc and then thrashing it out with the writers and with the other actors. I'm going to take another question from my sheet here. Brother Blood or Sebastian asks Clope Hearts. Well, see, to me, they're both the same person, Clope Hearts. Uh, I think Sebastian has always had Brother Blood inside him. And I think Brother Blood has been lurking in the darkest corners of Sebastian's mind, waiting to come out. And he just needed the opportunity. And that is what was given to him by Mother Mayhem. So, there you go. That's how Sebastian and Brother Blood are in fact one. And I hope, I hope, if I've done my job right, that you'll see all the way to the end, little glimpses of the humanity of Sebastian, of who he was, you know? I think that it's important that we see those all the way to the end so we understand why he does what he does and why he becomes who he becomes. So, let's take some questions. I've got uh, 99 questions. I'll let you finish that. Okay, let's see. Uh, what was your favorite scene to film? Well, you know, the, oh, this is asked by Philip R.S. Philip, I'll tell you, there's too many to name with Titans. There was so much that was uh, fun to film there. I especially joy, enjoyed, um, there's some scenes in episode 10 coming up that I really, really loved. And I got to try something very different to anything I've done before uh, in episode 10. And so uh, I can't spoil too much about that 
now, but I do have a lot of behind the scenes photos and videos that I will be sharing after that episode airs, specifically involving the secret thing that I'm talking about. So yeah, that was enjoyable. And then there's some terrific scenes in the finale. Um, the beginning of the finale, you know, I have uh, a great scene with Raven. Am I spoiling something there? Probably, doesn't matter. I've taken over this Instagram. I can do what I damn well please, Titans. Uh, and then, you know, all of the emotional stuff. I love the emotional stuff involving family, you know, that to me has always been a, a really interesting uh, dynamic to play. So yeah, let's see what else you got to say for yourselves. Uh, <laughs> okay, Ruby Walker is saying, do you have to follow exactly what the script says or do you get to add your own twist? So Ruby, what it is, is, um, you know, you do follow what the script says in terms of storyline, of course, and, and a lot of the time in terms of dialogue. I, with the stage directions, you know, like, for example, Sebastian nods or Sebastian laughs. I try, I take some liberties with those because you have to find what's natural in the moment. You know, you're not a puppet that just does exactly what is on the page. Um, I also sometimes like to improvise lines and try and find different ways into a scene because you want to keep it fresh. You know, I think the best acting is when you're reacting in the moment. And to do that, you've got to make yourself believe each time you do a scene that it's the first time you're experiencing those things. So uh, that is is some of the liberties you take. But I always try and be respectful to the writers because you know how many hours they've chiseled away at the scripts and, and the work they've gone through and the threads they've followed to, to map out those journeys. So I try and be respectful to that um, as much as I can. Now, I'm trying to work out what this username is. We Are Sensory, I think it is. We Are Sensory says, when will it be on available on Netflix? Well, I've been trying to find that out myself. I don't know uh, exactly. I'm hoping because I think it, it's, it comes out on Netflix after it's aired on HBO, I'm assuming. So this is my guess, and it's just my guess, mind you. I would, I would say once all episodes have aired on HBO Max, then uh, Netflix would be free to dump them around the world. And, you'll, and if you are waiting for Titans to come out in another country and you haven't seen the first six, you probably got it better than the, the rest of uh, the world who have watched the first six and then waited months to watch the last six. You know, you can just binge all 12 in one go and really get to experience uh, Sebastian's journey from beginning to end and see it uh, in one long 12 hour marathon. That's what I advise. <laughs> That's looking at my wife who's approving. Yeah, exactly. A 12 hour bloodbath. That's what I'm recommending. <laughs> Doctor's orders. Um, just uh, make sure you have a, a glass of cranberry juice and with a little B12 just to get you through. Okay, let's have a look at some of these questions that came through um, uh, earlier. So, were you a fan of DC Comics growing up, says Catherine Christine 99 Yeah, I was. I was, Catherine. I was a big fan of Batman, and uh, I loved the comics, and I loved watching the show as well. I loved all of the villains. I found them fascinating, you know, particularly uh, the Joker, of course, and Penguin, and um, Riddler, Catwoman, and even some of the more obscure ones like Clayface and, and Poison Ivy. And, um, yeah, I, I, was, I was fascinated by the kind of eccentricities of the villains. And I loved the dark and grimy world of Batman. I also loved that he was just a man with no powers, so to speak. So he just had to kind of go at it uh, with, of course, with his billions of dollars, but you know, no actual superpowers. So that was interesting to me. Um, let's see what else we got. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do guys? I'm gonna look here at the questions. Uh, Bsin28 says, who is your favourite Titan? Can't stand any of them. Don't like any of them. Honestly, uh, I tried to get on with them. Couldn't. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I think my favourite Titan is probably, well, Sebastian's favourite Titan is Raven. I think, of course, obviously, because of the bond there. But um, my favourite Titan 
You know, I really like uh, I really like Tim Drake, Tim Drake's Robin. You know, um, I think that was a pretty cool journey, and again, kind of a slow burn, getting us to the point where we know it's got to end up. You know, so I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna dive into these live questions again. I'm gonna have a look. Oh, here we go. K Grimes, 842, said, what is the pool of blood really made of? So, let's get into it, K Grimes. The pool of blood, actually... That's a spoiler, you can't say. What it's made of? I can say that. No, the <laughs> no so, so uh, the pool of blood, there were, as you've seen in the trailer that's been released worldwide, uh, I am going coming out of the pool of blood and I go into it in episode six, which has also been released across America. So uh, the pool of blood, in reality, there were two pools of blood. And one was the huge set of the Temple of Azeroth with a pool that was about knee high. And that was filled with water, colored water and, and lit red. And then there was also another pool that was just the pool and the sort of surrounding stones. And that was set up in front of a green screen. And that pool was about this high. And so what we did was we split the work between the two pools. So I started off walking into the shallow pool and then I finished off that scene on the other set um, in front of the green screen. And what we did to give the blood that consistency in the deep pool was it was glucose water. But of course, what no one ever realized about the glucose water was it, it was not only thick, but it was incredibly buoyant. So it was impossible for me to go under the surface. So I had to have two, I had to have a 40 pound dumbbell in each hand when I walked to go uh, under the surface, just so I weighed enough to take me below. And then I also had to, you know, have my clothes sewn to me as Sebastian and my glasses uh, tied to my head with fishing wire, just to make sure things didn't kind of fly off because it, everything floated in that pool. And uh, yeah, so, that was uh, certainly an experience. And I remember thinking after hours of being covered in uh, red makeup, head to toe and uh, dripping with glucose, you know, uh, this was something that I wanted. <laughs> this was something that I actually uh, emailed Greg Walker, the showrunner about like, I think this is a, an iconic moment for Brother Blood and I think we should have it in the show. And he said, don't worry, we're already on it. There will be a baptism. Uh, and so I had to keep reminding myself, you wanted this, you wanted this. So there you go. All right, let's have a little look at what other questions we've got here um, in the live questions. And then maybe I'll pick one from the other, um, from the ones that were given beforehand. So let's see. Did you improvise, Michael R36, did you improvise any lines apart from I'm not nothing? Yeah, I did. You know, little bits and pieces here and there. Nothing major because the writing's really good on the show. So a lot of the writing was as is or me and the writer would get in the space um, and we'd thrash it out there and we'd kind of tweak it together to make it work. Um, there was little things like when Sebastian's rehearsing his speech that he's going to do for the... Um, for the company that he wants to buy his game. He's rehearsing this speech to a bunch of stuffed animals in the taxidermy and he messes it up and goes, stupid, you know, things like that, like throwing in little words to try and make it more real and, and little lines here and there. Um, Daisy08 says, will you watch Titans? I certainly will, Daisy, certainly will. Uh, I watched the first six episodes and I'm excited to see the other six. Um, Episode seven is the only episode that I'm not in, but uh, I'm really excited to see what they did with that. And then also just like, I find it's a great way to learn, you know, um, you watch the show and you can kind of see what you were doing or what you thought you were doing that you weren't doing and you can learn from that. So I find that very helpful most of the time. Um, there's only ever been a few scenes or things in my career that I haven't watched just because I felt 
weird about them afterwards for whatever reason. But yeah, I'm, I'm nothing like that on Titan, so I'm really excited to see uh, see the last few episodes. Because also, you know, you do so many takes on the day, and for me, I like to try different things emotionally. So I'm curious what got used as well at the end of the day, you know. Mm. Let's see. Uh, okay, so who has asked? Oh, here's one. Here's one. Rebecca the Unicorn. <laughs> Rebecca the Unicorn has asked, how does your role on Titans compare, compare to playing Klaus on the originals? Well, um, you know, in some ways it compares, of course. There is blood involved in both roles. Uh, and the place where Sebastian ends up kind of egoically has definitely remnants of, of Klaus sewn into it. But certainly where Sebastian starts, he's not similar at all. He's, he's very um, timid in himself and, and, you know, kind of not able to in any shape or form grandstand in the way that Klaus did. So it was lovely for me to weave in little threads that I thought people who were fans of the originals would appreciate whilst still exploring a new character. So that's what I'm, I'm hoping you'll get from it. But of course, there's gonna be similarities as well because it's me playing, I have the same face, you know, I shout, I have the same uh, voice and I used my own accent in Titans. So uh, it will be similar in that way. But yeah, I think there's, um, there's some big differences, especially early on in Sebastian's journey. All right, all right. Let's see what other questions I've got. You have to, oh, here we go, here we go. There we go. Uh, Garshot Girlfriend, did you enjoy, it says, did you enjoy working with the cast of Titans? Yes, I did. Uh, I enjoyed it very much, particularly, well, that would be a bloody spoiler, wouldn't it, to tell you, because, you know, there was, there was a couple of members of the cast that I worked with a lot more than others, and I particularly enjoyed those scenes. It seemed like everybody really wanted to make it a good show and was focused on um, taking things that the fans had said about previous seasons and you know, trying to, trying to use that to create a, a season that everybody would love. And part of that, I think, was more of seeing the Titans act as a team. And I know that was something that Brenton was particularly focused on, and the others also. And so I hope that those of you who felt perhaps that that might be lacking in previous seasons will be not just satisfied, but excited by some of the scenes that are coming up, especially as we rock it towards the end of the season. Because, you know, this show really just picks up pace all the way along. So by the time you get to episode 10, you know, you're going to be flying through to the finale, especially if you're on a 12 episode binge fueled by cranberry juice and B12. So there you go. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take one of these um, questions that were given to me previously and printed out on a nice little sheet here. So, uh, mm -mm -mm. what was it like trying on the Brother Blood suit for the first time? Says DC Titans Tower. And also, how long did it take to get into the Brother Blood costume? Says one and only. Chris said Ward Lane. So uh, the, the Brother Blood suit, you know, I, it, it wasn't like it was all finished and I tried it on for the first time. It was actually like I, uh, I, it, it was built bit by bit on me. So it was a, a, a project that went on for months and it was incredible to be a part of seeing this thing slowly be developed and built. And so each time I went, uh, to Los Angeles to, um, you know, to, for the next kind of suit fitting, it was, it was more developed, the suit. It became, 
you know, it moved from, it started in a kind of way, and they told me as well about it, that it was going to start sort of more cosplay and slowly become this dark and gritty and awesome thing. And that's what happened. So, but the first time putting it on on set was great because you feel so commanding in it, you know. It's, it's not too comfortable to wear, I'll say that, especially when you're getting physical in it. It's heavy. It's kind of like fighting underwater. Um, but it's, it's great. It's, it, you know, I couldn't really sit down properly in it. So I would just stand in shadowy corners and, um, you know, in empty rooms and just wait for people to walk in and see how long it took them to notice I was there. And I did get a few screams, so that was nice. Um, so yeah, and oh, uh, and how long did it take to get into it? So it didn't take too long, you know, like 15 minutes, something like that. So I get the initial part of the suit on and then there were pieces like gauntlets that were strapped to me like armor. So I would, stand there and, and someone would strap all of these uh, pieces of armor onto me. And I, you know, I'd play music and I'd just try and kind of, um, you know, you kind of feel like a knight getting ready for battle in an armor like that. It's like, you know, it's like your pages are kind of strapping the armor to you and I'm going to do battle. So that's how I looked at it whilst I was getting into it. But man, I tell you, after wearing it for like a 12 hour day, it's, it's pretty brutal. And it's warm as well, you know, it's, it's, it's hot. So yeah, there you go. Let's see uh, what else I've got on the question board. I'm gonna take like just one or two more questions um, before this Instagram account is snatched back from me. So. <laughs> King Howard 21, which character do you like better, Klaus or Brother Blood? You know, it's funny, people always ask, uh, what do you like better, this or this, right? Everybody's, it's, it's so interesting to me how everybody wants you to choose between one thing or another, you know? Uh, when I started playing Klaus, like, what, what do you prefer, a vampire or a werewolf? Or, you know, who do you prefer, Sebastian or Brother Blood? Um, you know, which Titan do you prefer, pick this or that? But the thing is, I don't have to choose because they both live uh, rent free in my head and I'm stuck with them forever. So there you go. <laughs> I'm not going to choose because I got them both. Um, all right. Let's see. Uh, someone here, Miss Persia White says, you are my hero. Wait, that's my wife. That's my wife. Uh, good. But at least I'm somebody's bloody hero, you know? And I do think, uh, I've said it before, but I think that Sebastian, that um, he's the hero of his own story, you know? I think that he is, he believes that he's the hero of his own story. So, yeah. Um, let us see what else we've got. All right, I'm going to do one more. One more question, guys. Um... How would you describe part two of Titans season four? And that question is by Amirani Dubos. Hmm. How would I describe part two of Titans season four? Well, first of all, as I think you've guessed, it's going to be bloody. And there are going to be losses. And there will be action. So, so much action. There will be emotion. And it will be a runaway train. And once you get on, you cannot get off until the bitter, bloody end. So enjoy. Enjoy. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of this live. I am gonna save the video um, 
got very detailed instructions on how to do it, so I'm definitely not going to mess it up like I, I've done once before. Uh, so yeah, thank you for being a part of it. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram, the real Joseph Morgan, uh, to keep up with what's going on in my life. Currently shooting a show called Halo in Budapest, so that's fun. Anyway, enjoy Titans, and I'm sure we will talk about it online. <laughs>